Hey there everybody, it's Nathan Cool, and in this episode I want to cover white balance settings for real estate photography, talking about not just what settings to use for various cameras, but also why, so that you understand how to apply this to not just those cameras in case something goes wrong, but also to other cameras as well. So first I'll cover the principles behind the auto white balance just very quickly. In case you run into a snag, you need to change something up, you'll know why things are set the way that they are. The second then element of this video will be covering those settings themselves. So getting to the principle of it, as you know if you have my books, you've seen other videos, I like to use manual settings throughout everything I do for real estate photography and that's what I recommend except for only one instance and it's in white balance and only in one case and that's when we go inside to do interiors. When you're shooting exterior real estate photography, manual settings should be used across the board, even if you're shooting twilights. And this is something I talk about in my book on exterior photography, because when you're outside during the day, set it to 5,000 Kelvin or 5,500 Kelvin, you'll get consistent images every single time. That's the color temperature you're working with outside. If you're shooting on a cloudy day, you can adjust that a little bit in post. And when you're shooting twilights, it's going to be a good warmth that you'll get out of the house when you're shooting at that color temperature. But when you go inside, you're not using just one single light source. When you were outside, you were using just primarily the sun, unless you're doing a twilight. When you go inside, you also have that natural light streaming through tinted windows, treated windows. You've got incandescent lighting, halogen lighting, LED lighting, fluorescent lighting, plus then if you're using flash, the introduction of flash. Now, if you were doing just an ambient only shot, then white auto white balance would make sense because you don't know what that white balance is going to be. And you could try using a gray card in there, even if you were doing a flash shot. And while that can help, you have to make sure that that's in the proper location in one of the best lit areas. It's one of the two steps of the auto white balance algorithm that I talk about in my book, Mastering Color in Photography. And by the way, links to all my books and other videos related to the things I'll talk about in this video are down in the description for this video. But when you use just a gray card, you're taking a lot of chance, you're taking a lot of time on site to make that happen. So it, ambient's one thing. When you go to you do flambient, the flash ambient technique, which is what I use and what I recommend for real estate photographers, things are different. The ambient shot, it doesn't matter because we're gonna throw away the color in luminosity mode when we go to blend the flambient. But the flash shot is very important. Now, the flash itself is emitting about 5,500 Kelvin, but it is not the only light in that room. In fact, one of the problems of shooting real estate photography is that you're shooting a subject the size of a house, <laughs> literally. So yeah, you're shooting a small bathroom or a small bedroom. You could completely eliminate all the ambient light and just use flash but you're still going to get casts of color that will be thrown off of walls, floors, things like that. So a lot of times when I'm shooting very large spaces, my white balance will vary anywhere from 3,500 to over 5,000 Kelvin. It's a large range and I want to get myself very close to where I should be. Now, worst case scenario, you can always correct some of this in post-processing, not just by using white balance sliders and tint sliders or the eyedropper, but I show more accurate methods in other videos and of course throughout my books. And that's where you can actually do the algorithmic calculation calculations by doing some very simple, very quick Photoshop techniques that will do that for you, but they're not under the white balance. It's using curves and a few tricks like that. So there's always the way to do that, but we have to make sure that at least we get a good start on auto white balance. Now, with that said, I will use a gray card on some pay by the hour gigs. So when I'm doing architectural shoots, when I'm shooting for designers and builders, special stuff like that, yes, I will take the extra time to get one gray card shot of the scene to make sure I'm within that realm. But when you're using an auto white balance setting, then you get very close. But here's the problem, is that cameras have more than just one auto white balance setting. And this is where it gets tricky. So knowing what auto white balance settings to use, what would work best for real estate photography, that's what I wanna cover next. Especially when we take a look at some of the newer cameras where they really try to get fancy with all their white balance settings, but just make it too convoluted, but I can simplify it by going over these. So let's cover that next. 
No matter what settings you're going to be using, you have to remember that if you're going to be using flash, you need to use center pin isolation. You might recall from another video that I did that the smart triggers like the X Pro that are in the hot shoe of your uh, camera, they will communicate with the camera and then give that an invalid offset to what your white balance should be. So you tend to shoot much, much warmer with auto white balance if you have one of these triggers in the hot shoe because it thinks that you're using one of its own branded flashes. So anyways, you have to make sure that you center, uh, you isolate only the center pin on these triggers that are in the hot shoe, these commanders, to make sure that you don't get that white balance thrown off. And one of the things that I do, it's very common shooting Nikon cameras, whether it's a Nikon Z or one of the older DSLRs, I just use a Canon version of that X-Pro trigger in there. And that way the other pins besides the center pin, those other pins just don't line up. There's no communication down there. There's also um, adapters that you can get, and I've got links to all that type of stuff in the other videos throughout my books and whatnot. So anyways, that's a caveat. Just to bear in mind that you're never going to get the auto white balance settings correct if you don't have center pin isolation with your commander in the hot shoe. So starting out here with the Nikon Z series, this happens to be a Z5, you can use this, it's the Z6, Z7, all of them are pretty much the same. And uh, it looks a lot like the older Nikon cameras, and I'm gonna be showing one of those here next. But to the, there's a lot more white balance settings when we get into the new mirrorless line, the Z series. So what you can do is go to the uh, white balance setting, which is under the photo shooting menu, and it's also under your eye menu, and there's also a button near the lens uh, that you can control this as well. I wanted to show it in here because it shows a lot more of the options to try to explain it. So when you go into the white balance settings, you can see that there's auto and different other settings. If we go into auto itself and expand on that, then we've got three different choices, uh, auto zero, auto one, auto two, and you'll hear a lot of bloggers and whatnot just describe what those are and just parroting what was just in the manual. Well, let me tell you from experience using all these for real estate photography, if you were going to just be shooting HDR, if you were gonna be shooting just ambient, not flambient, I'll get to that next, but if it was ambient only, you would wanna use a zero, because what that does, that's gonna take out a lot of the warm cast. We're gonna see some of this also, something similar when we get to San, uh, Sony and Canon. But anyways, since I'm a flambient shooter, this isn't what I use. Instead, let's go back out here. If you're shooting flambient, you want to use something that will work best as a, just a traditional auto white balance. And I found that to be natural light auto. So natural light auto gives you that little sun little uh, icon up there. That is supposed to work somewhere between 4,500 and 8,000 Kelvin according to the Nikon manual, but it doesn't. It does a really good job at detecting white balance when I introduce flash. So I am shooting anywhere and it picking it up from about 38, 3900 Kelvin all the way up to about 5500 Kelvin. And it has done a fantastic job using, for instance, a Nikon Z5. Uh, and it almost is identical to then using my older Nikon D610s. And you know, I love my Nikon D610s and um, they're starting to get a little bit on the old side, but I still recommend those are definitely one of my recommendations. And I'll show you that here in just a second. But anyways, natural light auto will get you quite a bit closer to what you want. It's going to be very, very accurate when introducing flash. And don't worry about your ambient shot if you're shooting flambient, because once again, the color goes away when we use that ambient layer in luminosity mode. So now let's take a look at an older Nikon camera. So taking a look here, Nikon D610, once again, it's under the shooting menu where you'd find all the white balance settings. And there's of course that little WB button on the back screen too that you can go to a lot quicker. In here, the options are a little bit more limited where under auto, you'd have just a couple options. So if we went into white balance from the shooting menu and then go to auto and expand on that, there's normal and then keep warm lighting colors. So auto one is something that's really a lot closer to that natural light auto on the Nikon Z7 and Z6 and Z5. 
where keep warm lighting colors would be closer to about the auto one that's on those Z cameras. For years and years and years of using the Nikon D610s, I just used auto one normal and it did a really great job. And this also, by the way, worked really well for also ambient shots. So I never really had to change this back and forth if I was gonna do an ambient only or if I was gonna do flambient. But most of the time, of course, I'm doing flambient, so this you know worked out really well. But that's what I'd recommend though for the Nikon D610. Very simple, just the auto one normal. So Canon's a little bit different and they have, even on their R line, the, the newer mirrorless line, they've really got just two type of auto white balance settings. They've got auto for ambience priority and auto for white priority. And the white priority is what you'd be looking for. It would be closer to the Nikon Z Auto Zero, where once again, those orange casts are thrown out. So it's prioritizing the cooler colors, the white. Ambiance, whenever you see that in any of these white balance settings, it's trying to keep something warm. And we can understand that for a lot of other type of photography. But when we're shooting a lot of real estate photography, unless you're doing twilight shoots or um, something that's you know at night where you do want something warm, nine times out of 10 or probably 99 times out of 100, you're gonna be wanting to get rid of some of that orange cast. So what you want is the white priority, auto white priority. And that goes across the board for the Canon R series. Let's also talk about Sony though. Sony has a few more different options. So Sony has a auto white balance standard, auto white balance ambiance, and auto white balance white. Now standard is gonna be your typical standard, once again, uh, auto white balance. And that should work most of the time with flash. If on your particular uh, night, uh, Sony camera you're having issues with it, you can always try the white priority, but the standard is what should get you very close uh, pretty much all the time. And once again, even with uh, Canon, Nikon, and also Sony, if your white balance is off, you can always adjust that in post. But the idea of using these auto white balance settings, once again, is that it gets you very close and a good starting point that you can then adjust later in post processing, either using some of the white balance sliders and dropper, but I recommend more to use those auto correction methods that I show throughout my books that it in implements some curves adjustment layers and can be done automatically also using actions in Photoshop. Well, I hope this was useful for you. I hope that you can apply some of this to your photography as well. If you did like this video and you wanna see more, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel. <laughs> it won't cost anything. And as soon as one of these videos is posted, you'll be the first to know. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time, take care, be safe, and get out there and shoot something.